Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a recipe that I remember from my childhood. My mama's sister, Juanita, whom I called Nino because I could not say um, Juanita. I called her Aunt Nino, just a wonderful lady. She used to make a dish called Riggies. And so I had kind of taken that thought and kind of jazzed it up a little bit for us and, and you know, today and the foods and things that we like. Um, but it is a pasta dish made with chicken and you make a sauce out of roasted tomatoes and it's just delicious. And that's where we're going to get started. Now, I have a large Dutch oven preheating on my stove and I have here about a pound, pound and a half of chicken tenders that I'm just going to cut into bite-sized pieces before I put it into the pan. I also have a big pot of water that has come up to a boil so I can cook my pasta. I remember eating this at her home. I mean, I, I'm talking um, probably 40 years ago. Uh, she's been dead for quite some time was my mama's, one of my mama's older sister. My mother was a child among 12. My grandmother had 12 children. I cannot imagine. But this is just one of those recipes that uh, the first time I remember eating it was at Nino's. And then my aunt uh, Rosie on my mom's side, she was married to my mother's brother, my aunt Rosie, who's just a doll, I just love her so much, uh, she made this dish. And so it's just one of those things, you know, passed down. And I've just kind of changed it a little bit to suit things that I like. It's just delicious. Now, I have my chicken here, and I have some salt and pepper. And I'm wearing gloves just so that I can take these off after handling the raw chicken. I'm just going to put some salt and pepper on my chicken. All right, get rid of these. And we're gonna go over here to the stove, over here. And I'm gonna put just some olive oil, just an, I'm using olive oil. You could use canola or vegetable if you want. This is what I have. You want, I mean, we're building a sauce here. So we wanna make sure, you know, the olive oil has flavor and has great flavor. So that's one of the reasons I'm using that. Now, I'm just gonna put my chicken tender pieces down in that pot. It's not quite up to the heat level I would like, but it'll be okay. Just put them out in a single layer. Put my cutting board in the sink. And we're gonna get these browned in the uh, oil. Let me turn that up just a little bit here. Okay, and our water has come up to a boil, so we're going to put the pasta in it. I'm going to salt it. Salty like the sea. Now, let me show you why we're using the rigatoni. Okay, something just buzzed on me. Um, the rigatoni is a, it's a tube-shaped pasta that has little ridges on it. You can see the little ridges on there. So that catches the sauce, and the sauce also gets down in the little hole, and it's just yummy. I don't know what just happened with my stove, but we're going to have to figure this out. I don't know. Tell you what, let's take a quick break while I figure out what's going on with my stovetop. When I come back, this will we'll we'll continue on with our chicken riggy dish. I'll be back in just a minute.
All righty, I do not know what happened here, but we got it, it's back on, I don't know. My chicken is browning on. On the, I, I lost my train of thought there for a minute. Wondering if my stove's gonna cut back off. The chicken is browning in my pot. Now this is a cast iron, uh, enamel coated cast iron, and I love this, these pots. They retain the heat so well. Okay, we'll just let this kind of do its thing for a minute. I'm just turning these over. These little tongs, by the way, I found these on Amazon and I love them. They are just a dream to catch food, to hold on to it, to turn. Love these things. All right, let's just let that go for a minute. I'm gonna put my pasta in. We're gonna let that go for about, well, what does the instructions on this one say? They're all different, 12 minutes. If you can't find the rigatonis, which, I mean, you should be able to find them. I find them everywhere. You could use um, penne. You could use any tubular-shaped pasta, preferably with ridges so that it holds that sauce. Now, we're going to build the sauce uh, using, I'm using a blender because I really like this blender. It's just the Ninja blender. But if you don't have uh, a blender, you could use a food processor or, you know, just something that will puree. Now, I have one. I, this is a bigger jar. I have two. I'm going to see how we go. If you're using the little small ones, you'll need about three of them. We're going to dump everything. Those are roasted red peppers. And we're just going to dump them in the food processor along with two cans undrained of I like fire roasted diced tomatoes, but if you don't have the fire roasted, you just have regular tomatoes, that's fine. You can use that. Along with some garlic and some rosemary. Rosemary is a very distinctive taste in um, Italian-ish style cooking. And I'm just going to blend this up. Let me get it going the right way here for a little bit. Let's turn her on and let it go. I love this blender. It's a little loud. But it does a great job. And there's a, a very popular blender out there. What's it called? A Vitamix, I think is the na brand name of it. It's very expensive. Um, and honestly, I can't imagine that it does any better than this. This, the Ninja Blender, just saying, not sponsored or anything like that. It's just, I really do enjoy this blender. Let me do it just for a second more. We're just gonna let that hang out. See where we are, oh yeah, that's perfect. All right, we'll just leave that in there till we're ready for it. Let's check our chicken. The pasta's cooking, the chicken's cooking. We can actually, I think, turn that down just a dot. This is yummy. I just want to brown this chicken. We're going to add our sauce to it in just a minute. We'll let that go for just a minute more, and then we will add our sauce. This is for the end. This is about a half a cup of heavy cream. I'm going to chop up some parsley. I'm going to add, because I've got this beautiful bunch, I'm going to, let me just do it this way. Goodness. If you keep your stems down in the water, it helps them to last a little longer. Now, I'm not going to pull off all those little leaves. I'm just going to cut off the stems. The stems of parsley are not that great. Now, I like flat leaf parsley. If you've watched this program much at all, you know that. Not a fan of the curly leaf. I just don't think it has any flavor. Yes, it adds color, but it doesn't add any flavor. Where the flat leaf Italian parsley adds a lot of flavor as well as beautiful color. Be careful when you're buying this at the store because this and cilantro look a lot alike. 
and they're usually side by side in the herb department of your grocery store. So make sure you look at the little label on there because two very different flavor profiles, um, polar opposites. I personally am not a fan of cilantro. I think it tastes a little soapy. And I think there's a camp of you either really like cilantro or you don't. And I'm in the don't category. I'll eat it in salsa, but that's about the extent of it for me. But if you like it, great. Tell me how you develop that taste. But you wouldn't want that in this anyway. You want the flat leaf Italian. I'm going to add just a little bit of this to my sauce because I have it. It's mainly going to be for the bread. Now, speaking of, let's get our, I've got my oven preheated. And we are going to make a crostini to go with our rigatonis, riggies. But the first thing we need to do is to bake our bread, our crostinis. Now, obviously, this is already made. I just bought a loaf of, I like the Italian bread at my grocery store. I'm running out of room here. Let me see here. Um, you use what you like. You could get a French baguette would be fine. If you're doing, if you want to put this on a grill, it's a great accompaniment to any grilled item. Obviously, I'm not at a grill right now, so I'm just going to pop it on my baking sheet and put it in the oven. I just want to toast it a little bit before I put my mixture on there. Okay. I love this bread. Bread is much easier to slice if you have a serrated blade. If you're a new cook, a serrated blade looks like this, and it makes cutting bread a lot easier and tomatoes a lot easier. Okay. I'm going to, because I'm not grilling, I'm going to drizzle mine with just a little tiny bit of olive oil, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I want it to crisp up. Okay, so I'm going to put just a little tiny bit of olive oil on mine. Now, let's see how we can get all this on there. Well, that'll be a snack. That's perfectly fine. I love bread. Now, I'm going to drizzle just a little tiny bit of olive oil. Not much. I just want... To get that crisp on there that you would get over a grill. All right, we're gonna pop this in the oven for maybe five minutes and then we will turn it over. We'll let that go. Let's make the cheese that's gonna go on this. We're gonna make a cream cheese spread to go on our crostinis. Now I have here just, I, I, bought the whipped cream cheese because I think it's a little easier to work with but you can use you know whatever regular block cream cheese if that's what you have. I'm going to add a little bit of parsley, a little bit of salt and pepper and a little bit of dried rosemary but I don't want the big stick. Rosemary is delicious. It's probably my favorite herb to use but it can be a little bit you see how it looks like little pine needles? And that, you know, can be off-putting to some people. So I'm going to put it in my mortar and pestle. This is actually called a molajete. It's a granite one. I love this thing because it's rough inside. If you're shopping, on another note, because I get asked questions like this all the time. Where did you get that particular um, dish or knife or in this case a molajete. Um, you can find them in good gross, good well stocked, not good stock, well stocked kitchen stores or you can find it online which is where I got mine. But I want to show you. All right you saw it before. Now do you see the difference how that just kind of grinds that up and makes it into a powder? That's what you want for this. This is a very heavy um, mortar and pestle and I love it for so many different things. 
Let's check on the chicken real quick. I hear it over here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. See how good and brown that's going? That's what you want. All right, we'll get to that in just a second. And then we're just going to mix these things together. And then when the bread is toasted, we will spread this on there and then pop it back in the oven for just a couple more minutes. All right, that's ready to go. Hmm, so good. Now, let's add our sauce to our chicken. Okay. Be careful if you have this, or really any of them, but this particular one has three blades in it and they are so sharp. So please be careful removing that because it will cut you. That's experience speaking. So let's stir all of that together. The chicken and the Beautiful sauce we made. Oh my goodness, that smells so, so, so good. We want to bring that up to a simmer. Let's check our pasta, see where we are. I'm a firm believer, where's a slotted spoon here? There we go. Um, there's only one way to know if pasta's done and that's to taste it. But here, let me show you this real quick. You can get a better picture of, uh, you see how the ridges are in there? That gives you something for that sauce to grip onto. Uh. Needs a couple more minutes and then that'll be done. I love pasta. Mm -mm -mm. Let's turn this down to low. I don't wanna burn it. I'm gonna cover this and just let it simmer for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll finish that dish up. I'm gonna take a break. I'm just gonna clean up my mess. When I come back, we will finish up the crostini, and then I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious, easy side dish, zucchini ribbons, to go alongside our chicken rib riggies and our cheese crostini. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, now let's finish up our chicken riggies. I've got about half a cup of heavy cream because I want to add some richness to it. You could use half and half if you wanted. Stir that in and then add your drained pasta. Oh my goodness. Oh, doesn't that look yummy? Oh, it looks so good. Look at that beautiful bowl of chicken riggies. Oh, can't wait to eat this. Now, if you have, this is optional, if you have some cheese in your pantry or your fridge, you could add some mozzarella cheese. I do actually happen to have some here, so why not, right? And a little bit of parm. I'll save a little bit of that to sprinkle over it as I serve. That's totally optional. You do not have to have the cheeses on this dish if you don't want it. And that, my friends, is done. While we wrap up the rest of this, let's just turn that off because I don't want to overcook the pasta. Let's grab the toast out of the oven. I flipped it over during the break, because you're watching me do this in real time. 
I'm not, I don't have a staff behind the scenes doing the swaps. You, it, it's me. <laughs> so we're going to just let that hang out for just a minute while we work on the um, zucchini ribbons. Now, I have a nonstick skillet here. Now, this is where I want you to be very, very careful. I'm using a mandolin. If you uh, are not comfortable using a mandolin, you could use a knife would be fine. But what we're going to do is make some ribbons. I have the, just the straight blade on it, and I want to make the ribbons. Watch your hands, please watch your hands, because you don't want to cut your fingers. Not a job I would let my children do, because it is very, very sharp. They also come with guards if you want to use the guard. You see how easy that works? So you get down to that very end. That's fine. We'll still use that. This is, one is adjustable, so you could make your slices a little thinner if you wanted. Up to you. The blade has a little thing there that you, that goes into the, whatever you're cutting. In this case, my zucchini. But this is a great tool to have for lots of different things. Now, because I'm only going to do two, these are kind of long. I'm going to cut them in half, just lengthwise, just like that. My oil is hot. I'm going to add my zucchini pieces. You can do them as thin or as thick as you want to. Don't overcook your zucchini. That's when it gets slimy and not a good. People don't want to eat that. So this just takes a minute. Just going to kind of let that do its thing for just a second. I think I used my other little tongs, didn't I? I did. Nope, they're right here. Let's get them. I knew I had another pair, a little shorter pair. I love these things. They come in different lengths. I really, at home, have just kind of gotten away from using the regular tongs. I love these things because they grip the food so much better than the wooden, not wooden, but the rubber-coated ones, the regular traditional. Okay, we're going to let this go for just a minute. Doesn't take long. Just let that hang out. I am going to add some red pepper flakes because I like spice. If you don't, don't worry about it. Now, let's get our bread. This is hot, so please be careful. And I'm going to use a little offset spatula. And you just want to put a little bit of your cream cheese mixture onto your bread. If you want to, you can put this back under the broiler for just a minute or not. I mean, it's cream cheese. You don't have to. It's perfectly fine. Up to you. That part's completely up to you. It's really good. And it's just another way to, to jazz up just plain bread, and it's delicious. You could add any flavors that you want to this. Um, you could also do this with the flavored cream cheeses or the Borson cheese. You know, you can buy those little rounds of different garlic and herbs or whatever. You can buy the um, strawberry or blueberry cream cheese. This would be great for breakfast with that if you wanted to not use olive oil and use some butter and add your cream, your flavored cream cheeses. I mean, there's a million different ways that you could do this. They make a vegetable flavored cream cheese that I really like. I like cream cheese, so that's me. I do like the whipped. I think it's just a tad bit easier to spread. I need to check on my zucchini here real quick. We will plate up our food. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. See how that just so quickly cooks. I don't like my zucchini to be mushy. And this is <coughs> those red pepper flakes. This is a dish that you could totally do on the grill. I love grilled zucchini. So if you were in the summertime, maybe you were grilling something, toss some zucchini on there. Delicious. Mm-mm-mm. Woo! All righty. <coughs> that red pepper flake getting to me. Okay, now, I do want to add, just let those go for about a minute. I am going to add some lemon juice to, if you want to zest it, you can, to my zucchini. I'm just going to do half because this is a big lemon and it's very juicy. Oh, there's red pepper flakes. And there you go. That's pretty well done. I don't like my zucchini overcooked. Okay. Let's plate this up. Let's get our wonderful chicken riggy. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh my goodness. Look at this beautiful plate of food. Oh, look at all that stringy cheese. Yummy. Our bread. Can't forget that. And some zucchini. Don't want to forget that either. And you have got a delicious and easy meal. You could top that with some extra parm. Chicken riggies cheese crostini, and zucchini ribbons. Thank you for joining with me, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna.